This was one of those savage crimes, one of those inhuman acts of violence that makes you question humanity. The victim was 36 years old Linda Louise Leslie. Leslie had an affliction though, she suffered from Huntington's chorea. I may have pronounced that wrong, if I did, please correct me in the comments. Anyway, this affliction left the 36 year old woman with the mentality of a 15 year old girl. With the mentality of a 15 year old and being physically disabled, there was no doubt that Leslie needed help and assistance, and she got it. Her aunt, Medina, would give Leslie general assistance and on top of that, she had friends that would assist her on a day-to-day -day basis, checking in on her and making sure she was doing fine. William Voracek was 35 years old. There was some sort of dispute over the rent for the trailer Leslie was living in. You see, she was living in a trailer park, as was William. The dispute was the payments, but I'm not sure if it was that Voracek was behind on his rent or if Leslie was behind on hers. If I have interpreted the situation correctly, then it seems like Leslie's caretaker was paying her rent to Voracek, but by March of 1980, the rent was two months behind. That could be a motive for what would happen, but it's no excuse for the horrible burst of inhuman violence that Leslie would suffer. Both physically and mentally impaired, she was in no position to defend herself against William Voracek. At first it looked like a robbery gone wrong. Just over a hundred dollars had been stolen, but the violence was so savage, so mad. Leslie had been hit twice in the head by a hammer. Then she had been stabbed three times with a large kitchen knife. And as if that wasn't enough, her attacker had strangled her. She had been strangled with such force that the bones in her neck fractured. After all that, the killer lit her trailer on fire and went on his merry way. William became a suspect and his home was searched. There they could find fibers and liquid from Leslie on the clothes he wore the day of the murder. They also found fiber from William inside the trailer, but he was after all the landlord, so that could be explained. The case is somewhat controversial, because that was all the evidence they had. Evidence that could be argued to be circumstantial, but it was apparently all they needed to sentence William to death. And die he certainly did. Lethal injection. I truly hope that he was the killer, otherwise the murder of Leslie is still unsolved and an innocent man was executed. But there was a motive and circumstantial evidence, so there is a high possibility that he was her killer. But possibilities isn't evidence. He would appeal his sentence for years, all in vain, and he would until his very death insist he was innocent. At one point he began making wild accusations against the local police force. He said that he and a group of other men, one of them being a respected officer, would gather and have sex with Leslie, and that he was unjustly sentenced to cover up this indiscretion. But his accusations wasn't given any credibility, not even by his own lawyer. They appeared more to be the rantings of a madman. And just because he insisted on being innocent doesn't mean that it was. A good example is David Carpenter, a Californian serial killer, I'll probably cover him at some point. The first feature was short, but don't feel blue, it is after all, a double feature. Nocona, Texas is a small rural town, one of those cozy little places a population just about 3,000 people, and a town hospital, Nakona General. Nakona General was a small hospital made for a small town. Just about 45 beds was available. Who could possibly think that this small hospital in this small town could be the place where such malevolence would manifest? But it did. Its name? Vicky Dawn Jackson. Vicky was born in Indiana, but moved with her family to Nokona when she was still just a baby. Nokona was all she knew. 
That's where she grew up. That's where she, as a teenager, became pregnant and married for the first time. The marriage broke down and she found someone else, became pregnant again and married again. By 1984, when Vicky was 18 years old, she had three kids and been married twice. A rocky start to life. She insisted that nursing was her passion. She studied and worked at several facilities in the area, but she never seemed to fit in. She always quit after a short time. Eventually, her marriage to her second husband broke down as well, and so in 1996, she met her third husband, Kirk Jackson. But her life was falling apart. By the year 2000, she had lost custody of her kids, she had suffered a miscarriage, and she had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Three blows in one year makes Vicky a bad girl. In my opinion, this was the so-called trigger, the switch that awoke something within her, because it is no coincidence that her life was plummeting down the drain just as patients began dying in the Nocona General Hospital, 22 in total between the year 2000 and 2001. Vicky Dawn Jackson would eventually admit to 10 of those deaths. It was odd because 21 of the 22 deaths in the hospital had occurred during the night shift. That same year, Vicky had started working the night shift in the small town hospital. Many of those that died seemed otherwise healthy as well. One of them was being treated for a foot injury. One was an elderly man with dementia in otherwise good health. One of the victims had been admitted to the hospital with diarrhea. Mivacron is a drug used to temporarily stop a patient from breathing so that a tube can be inserted into their lungs. Mivacrone can be very lethal if administered with sinister intent or incorrectly. The hospital had been dumbfounded by all these deaths, but when several vials of the drug Mivacrone was found to be missing, police were finally involved. The investigation led them to Vicky, and in her home they found a syringe with traces of Mivacrone. Ten of the dead patients were exhumed and underwent examination, all ten, show traces of the drug. That's how she did it. She injected these patients with a drug that stopped their breathing. They didn't know what she really was. To them she was a nurse, someone there to help them with whatever was ailing them. But she tricked them. Her facade was convincing, but who doesn't trust a nurse? Their job is to help others. But Vicky was a wolf in sheep's clothing. She was arrested in 2002 and sentenced in 2006. She never gave a motive for her crimes. She refused, and still refuses, to discuss the tragic events that unfolded in Okona between the years 2000 and 2001. But I feel like I need to clarify something. These deaths was a burst. They occurred within just three months of each other, from December of 2000 until February of 2001. And some people might think that Vicky was just a symptom of the chaos around her, that the world created her, that she was an unwilling vessel to psychiatric problems and a rocky life. But she wasn't all that unwilling. She was a constant nag at home. She would slap her kids and when she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, her daughter had asked her, what is that? And Vicky had responded by saying, it means that I could kill you and get away with it. She said this to her own daughter, and in hindsight, I have no doubt that she was capable of it. It's also worth to note that these patients that died were all elderly patients. Murder is still murder, but I just wanted to clarify. And just to put that cherry on top, one of her victims was her husband's grandfather. Her empathic abilities was clearly severed. She might have thought that she was helping these old people, that she was an angel of death as they are called that these people were suffering, but she clearly has a very dark and sadistic side to her. Murder was like an outlet for her, like a drug or an orgasm. It was a way to vent out all the shit. And in my opinion, she knew exactly what she was doing, preying on the old and sick. What a cunt. I hope you enjoyed today's double feature. Next video will take a little bit longer to make, but it's a big one. There will be some small teasers in the coming days, and then the real teaser will drop. Now, can you tell me, what does the B stand for?